Okay guys, listen, most of you know me through my stance on COVID and on my uh, health and nutrition. I'm also an avid sportsman, as most of you know. I love football, I love GAA, I love rugby, I love soccer. I was a signed member of Portland Football Club before I went to university. Um, but the big, I love boxing, I love all, all physical sports. But the biggest sport in my life is motorcycle racing. And let me tell you how that happened. I was a kid of about 16 and a half years of age and my good friend, neighbor, a guy called Jackie Michael Oren, who many of you in the motorbike fraternity would know, took me to uh, my first motorbike race, the Ulster Grand Prix. And I remember him throwing me in the back of a little Morris Minor van along with his best friend called Davy Nugent. And on the way up to Belfast, I, I didn't know where the Ulster Grand Prix was, but on the way up towards Belfast direction, all I could hear them talking about was, Augustini, this Hillwood, that Hillwood Augustini, MV, Augusta, Honda. I really hadn't a clue what they were talking about. Anyway, we landed in Belfast, way up in these mountains, and we walked about a mile, got onto a road and into this field, and Jackie said to me, get you down in that shock. Now, a shock was a big, a big deep drain. Get you down in that shock and keep your pay, get your place. I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, get your place for the race. So during this big drain, I went, and it was a little bit of an embankment, and he says, put that coat over that there to keep the damp off you and put your arms right over the bank because the motorbikes were coming down that road. And uh, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and, and all of a sudden I could hear this roar away in the distance. Little did I know I was only a mile away from the pits. And I heard Jackie send to Davy, there they're off. And then the next thing I heard, oh, they're coming over the Deer's Lake now. Oh, I'll see them coming up the wheelers. They'll be here soon. Oh, they're at the, they're at the hairpin now. Right, Liam, watch out, they're coming up, they're coming up here soon. And I turn around to Jackie and Davy and says, what? And he said, did you see them? I says, are they here yet? He says, they just went past you. I says, what? He said, they just went past you. In the blink of a head. I said, they couldn't have. He said, they just went past you. And the next thing I seen this gag out of bikes coming around the quarry bends. Yeah. And I was totally, totally, totally bamboozled. He said, the next time, keep your eye on the road. So... Five or five, five or six minutes later, he said, here, they're coming up past the hairpin. Now, keep your eye on the road. And there I was, leaning out. My head wouldn't be allowed now, over the bank. And Augustini and Hill were coming, just like that there together. And they were, they were, they were trying to keep the bike upright. The bike was, or sorry, the bike was, was wanted to go upright. And they were trying to get it to go like that. And they flew past me. And immediately, I got a hit of something. I don't know what it was. I now know it was called dopamine. And I was hooked, hooked right there and then. You couldn't have got me high strength cocaine or heroin or whatever sort of effect that has on your brain, but whatever it is, the effect I got was a thousand times stronger and I immediately got hooked. Uh, I went to the Ulster Grand Prix again the next year. The year after that, I started university in Korean. I stayed in, uh, in Port Stewart in, in digs in Atlantic Circle in Port Stewart. And about the first week of May, my landlady said to me, Liam, would you mind going to stay at my sister's next week on Mill Road in Port Stewart? because the Northwest 200 is on next week and we have people come to stay with us because I have a big shed out the back and they walk at their bikes. I said, no problem. And the next day I went down to the shed and that's when I first got introduced to a man called Tom Hearn. And that man became my hero. I just loved and adored Tom Hearn. What a writer, what a great, what a great friend he was to, to me. Uh, just a jovial, jovial person. And as I said, I fell in madly in love with him in a motorbike world. And I followed Tom everywhere he went. And that fateful day in 1979 in the Northwest when he lost his life, it was as if somebody put their hand in my heart and just pulled out my heart and pulled out my stomach. I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't live. It was horrible, like losing a member of my family. But then I got a new, a new hero, an up and coming young lad from Balamoney called Zoe Dunlap. And he became my hero then. And at that, that time, there were two other writers who were really, really getting on the scene. Two great writers, Norman Brown and Jean McDonnell. Sadly, both lost their lives in unfortunate circumstances. It wasn't their fault. Two great writers they were, and God knows where they would have been if they hadn't, if they hadn't had that, those accidents that were not their fault. But as I say, Joey then became my hero, and... Uh, that faithful day in Estonia, in Tallinn, when Zoe lost his life, again, someone put their hand in my heart and my stomach and pulled out my whole insides. 
and I, I, I just couldn't. I was worth nothing to the, I'd lost another hero. And this little video I'm making now is to tell you of my love affair with motorbikes and how I kept going back to them. It's like, why does a, why does a, a woman keep going back to, a, a battered wife keep going back to, a, to a, a husband who beats the crap out of her? It's because she's madly in love with them and keeps going back. And that's the same way I felt losing all those great people. And I kept going back back and back and I'm still that love affair is still with me and I want I must say I got into the big depression there when I discovered that the Northwest and all motorbikes were cancelled this year and for all those people who, who paid money in for the insurance everybody thank you from the bottom of my heart and maybe next year we can get something more concrete like people are a bit free to put money into a GoFundMe account it's not fair to have to ask business people to finance motorbike races I think that if we could get two Ulster people who 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 are trustworthy and who people love and adore and if they were to set up a bank account who we trust and I think if Rory McElroy and uh, Jonathan Ray were to set up a bank account together and have somebody looking at it people would not be afraid to put money into that bank account because there are two guys who don't need the money and who love the sport and who love their country yeah but anyway I'm now going to show you something that's going to bring tears to my eyes I'm with I'm with a friend. I can't tell you who this person is because the stuff he has is invaluable. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to show you is this. Where is it? Yes. This is a picture of Joey on a 250. He used to race that bike for two years. Yes, I'm doing feedback from the back. Now, okay, that's Joey's bike. If we take this off, look what we have here. We have the very, very, very bike. This is the bike. Now, what Joey did was, Joey sold this, he's gonna sell this bike to a guy, so he changed the fairings. These fairings are not the same as seen here, but here we have the fairings. The fairings are shown on the actual photograph. See? Those are the fairings belonging to this bike. And not only that, This is the seat. This is the actual seat that Joey sat on, on this 250. Yeah. Isn't that something? Now the creme de la creme. The next one I want to show you folks is this beautiful, beautiful print here by Rod Organ. It's um, Colm Ramsey's 250, Honda Britain. Given to Joey to ride the TT in 1998. Uh, it was given to Joey because Joey couldn't ride, he couldn't ride anything heavier or bigger because he had broken his pelvis, he couldn't ride, and he had broken his collarbone, so they had to give him a smaller bike. So um, Colin Moranzi and his brother had to actually set Joey on that bike, yeah? Okay, up in the clouds in a helicopter, it's not much fun down on the tarmac then, not unless you're winning the race like Joey is. Joey Dunlop. 46 years old, battered and bruised, a finger missing, his hip hurting, his hand hurting, his shoulder hurting. He's leading this race by something like 39 seconds from McGuinness in second place. Through Kurt Michael, flat out. Well, what a sight that is. Are you ready for it? Da -da -da -da. What about that, folks? That's the actual bike. That's the bike that Colin Ramsey and his brother had to physically set Joey on at the start of the race. You watching? Unbelievable. I am so, so, so proud and happy to be looking at. I'm not even fit to look at the same bike that Joey rode at the TT. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It brings tears to my eyes, but there's something else that's gonna bring big tears to my eyes. I'm going to show it to you now. So listen, uh, the last item I'm going to show you, I'm trying to hold back tears when I show you this. This is one of the last helmets Joey ever wore. You can actually see the sticker on it. And inside it, there's also a little sticker here where he got presented with an FIM gold award, gold medal. That, that whole thing, Money couldn't buy that. 
to me. And I feel privileged that the person who owns that trusted me enough to put my hands on that helmet, to put my hands on that bike, because I'm not fit to put my hands near that helmet. Yeah? So listen, folks. You can see the desire I have for motorbike racing. And hopefully we will have no more problems with getting insurance cover for the Northwest, the Ulster Grand Prix. Hopefully it'll be revived on the short circuit racing and all those riders that I've mentioned before. And I suppose the big, big question in every motorcycle racer's head is if you had Joey, Norman Brown, Robert Dunlap, Tom Hearn and uh, Stephen Cole even, all in the one same bike, same, the, the, same, the, same, the same capacity going around the Ulster Grand Prix, who would win? That's a big, big question. But uh, please support the Northwest 200, the Tundergate, Tundig and any motorbike race. Support it by buying a program. That's all you have to do. Buy a program. Don't be, don't be selfish. I paid 20 quid to go and see the Belfast Giants playing ice hockey for an hour and a half. I paid 12 quid to watch a soccer match for an hour and a half. Spending £20 on a program for a, a week's racing and entertainment in the beautiful Causeway Coast is peanuts. So I hope you've enjoyed that video uh, as much as I have enjoyed being in the presence of history. I really do, really do pre-privileged. Thank you very much for watching this.